I'm Minnie Rowe. This past April, a devastating earthquake struck Nepal, killing close to 9,000 people and damaging priceless artifacts and architecture, some that can never be replaced. Particularly hard hit was areas surrounding Kathmandu Valley, historically built by an indigenous group called Noir. But even before the earthquake leveled the area, the Noirs were facing extinction, their culture in jeopardy of disappearing within a few generations. It's something that the immigrant population here in the United States is trying to reverse. Nestled between Tibet and India lies the tiny country of Nepal. Home to seven UNESCO heritage sites, this sliver of land has long been heralded for its beautiful pagodas, temples, and artistry of Kathmandu Valley. Nepal's population of 28 million is made up of over 40 different ethnic groups, and the Noirs are the sixth largest indigenous group with over a million people. The Noirs have their own language and distinct traditions, but this could all soon disappear, becoming mixed in with the rest of Nepal. Reviving Nepal Basha is a 30-minute documentary produced by Sam Shakya and Bimina Ranjit to shed light on the disappearing culture while exploring the historic contribution of the Noirs to the Kathmandu Valley. Nepal Basha is the formal and historic name for Noir language. Whatever you see if you go to the Kathmandu Valley, all the temples and all the monastery, all the art and wood carving, stone carvings and and also especially the tankas as well, the pova. They are all very well-known art in Nepal, so that's all done by the Newar people. Shakya says this documentary was a personal journey for him. He was seven years old when his family, who were Newars, immigrated to Oregon. I did this documentary for my father because we both been working together on promoting the, our culture, our heritage. So ever since I was little, I would help him with publications and whatnot. And I wanted to do something for myself. And since my background is in media, I thought, you know, making a movie would be the most effective way to get this news out there about disappearing languages. Shakya spoke Nepal Basha at home, but didn't realize until he visited his motherland 10 years ago how quickly his language and culture were disappearing in the homeland, especially among the young generation. When I went to Nepal to do this film, a lot of people were surprised that I was speaking a language that's dying because most people in Nepal already only speak Nepali. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the Noir culture became suppressed as various regimes established strongholds over the Kathmandu Valley, establishing Nepali as the national language of Nepal, historically known as the language of Khaz people from Gorkha region. <laughs> And in order to stay competitive in this global market, English became the other dominant language in Nepal. Nepal Basha is no longer taught, nor is the culture celebrated in schools children are expected to adapt to Nepali traditions. It's a very important topic to look at because within it embedded is your identity, where you come from, so you can't lose the language. Samir Maharjan is the president of the New York Noir Guti, the local Noir community in Jackson Heights, New York. Even with over 200,000 Noirs across the United States and 15 Noir Guti chapters, including ones in Texas, Maryland, and Seattle, he says it's an uphill battle to keep his culture alive. If they learn only Newar language versus Nepal language, when they go back to the Nepal, Newar language won't be using. And if they don't know about Nepali, they will be backward and they can't do whatever they want to do. It's very sad. At the same time, it's very difficult to, at this moment, it's very difficult to 
preserve that, save that. For that, everyone has to work very hard. Maharshan says the key is education, showing the world the rich cultural heritage that is Noir, hosting important celebrations like Ma Puja, ushering in the new year, showcasing cultural dance performances, which are open for everyone to enjoy and promoting documentaries like Reviving Nepal Basha, which opened in June at the Hoboken International Film Festival. They don't know what is going on. Uh, they just know like, uh, yes, my kids are not speaking this and that, but they don't like really aware like next hundred years what will happen. So those kind of documentary will help them for our generation or for our next generation. They will definitely know like, hey, let's, focus on this. When the earthquake hit the area in April, the loss of life was devastating. Culturally, it was a severe blow as well, not just for Nepal, but for the citizens of the world. Fortunately, museums like the Rubin in New York City, which is dedicated to Himalayan art, houses hundreds of art pieces from Nepal with a significant portion from Noir. Its campaign, hashtag Honoring Nepal, identifies the work from Nepal while bringing awareness through social media to the relief efforts in the area. As many objects as perhaps were destroyed, uh, at least many are now saved and saved in perpetuity. And I think the Nepali people would be pleased and happy at that, that their culture lives on outside the geographic confines of the, of the area. Maharjan believes the international spotlight on Nepal is a silver lining for his people. The Noirs originally built Kathmandu Valley. Now, the next generation of Noirs has the opportunity to restore the area back to its glory days. We all have to come together to save this heritage. And skill-wise, because those are uh, made by brick and mud combination. My grandparents, they used to build the uh, walls and all stuff by using the mud and brick. So that's the reason I think we should use those kind of the leftover skills and come up with the new ideas also. We'll, let's pour it together. And then I think uh, we, can, we can do better. And with the help from documentaries like Reviving Nepal Basha, with screenings planned for future dates in the U.S. and in Nepal, this could be the turning point for the Noirs. So I think more than ever, you know, this film is important because what I wanted to do was capture the living culture of Nepal, but I think what I've captured is maybe a memory of what Nepal was like. I'm Minnie Rowe for Asian American Life. Oh.